Hey, what is going on everybody? Today we are super excited because we are announcing the Unity 6 firmware version 2.0 update. And in this update, we have included a ton of new features, including our brand new device editor that everyone has been waiting for and asking for. So today we're gonna go over and show you everything that we've added into version 2.0. So let's jump right in and see what we have. So here on the pedal, you can see that we now have um, the ability to keep your overdrives on when you jump through loops. So here I've got like a verse one, verse two switch programmed. So with a press, we've got a couple drives and a long press, it jumps to a couple different drives. And then in, on the BPM button, I have this jumping to a new bank. And this would like replicate if I wanted to turn on and off um, any individual loop. So if I press the BPM knob, you'll notice that loops two and three stay on. However, the loop order does rearrange. So you can see the loop order rearranged. We quickly, we quickly jump to a new loop and then loops two and three remained on. So in here, you can see that we can quickly turn any other loop on or off. And so we've got Benson in loop one. We'll go ahead and turn that on. And then when we jump back to our previous bank, loop one remains on. Um, so that's a cool new feature that and say if you wanted to use uh, one bank for a song like we have here and then you want to jump to another bank to control another midi pedal or turn your loops on and off now you can quickly do that and jump back and forth without having your drives turning on or off so so that's a great feature that we've added and we hope that you guys will get a lot of good use out of that so now let's dig in and see what is new in our uniports so inside the uniports we can go into global settings here and you can see that we have added uh, a few new features. So we have in Uniport 1, I have external tap, nothing really new there, but we still have our typical MIDI uh, uh, tip ring, MIDI type A, type B. We have external tap, which is not new, but however, we have added external tap to all four Uniports. So each Uniport can send its own individual and separate tap division. So in this case, you could send a quarter note to one analog delay and a dotted eighth to another analog delay, and they each get their own separate tap divisions based on the clock inside of the Unity 6. And then you have two more ports to use in case you wanna send tap information to a tremolo or anything like that, or a third delay if you really love delay pedals. Uh, so external tap, all four Uniports, this is new on version 2.0. Um, then expression pedal is not new, but you will see we have red remote and amp switch. So now we have the ability to control JHS red remotes like the kilt here on the board or the morning glory or any other JHS uh, pedal with the red remote that has that feature on there. You would just run, you would assign red remote to the uniport you want to use and you run a tip sleeve cable. So a standard patch cable into there. And then just like the external tap, this is accessible across all four uniports, so you can have up to four JHS red, ro red remote enabled pedals, and then you can control all of them individually. Um, and then amp switching is like the exact same thing, all four uniports, all individually. You can switch an amp channel, or if there's a foot switch on your amp that toggles um, like reverb or tremolo on and off, you can control that now with our uniports. So let's dive in and kind of look and see what that looks like. So. And here we don't want to change anything. We're going to leave that as external tap. But if we go back into our uh, programming here, you can see we have JHS assigned to number four, and this is going to be controlling our red remote. So you can see that we can control the red remote now in version 2.0, as well as we can control um, any other amp channel or amp effect switching. And this inside your settings is really simple. This is programmed underneath switch four. So you go to programming, switch four, and then in here you just assign, like in this particular instance, I have the press actions of press. So whenever you press the switch, we're gonna toggle the red remote, and then it wants to know which red remote, so you just assign it to any of the four uniports here. And we have this assigned to uniport three. So that is how you would assign that. And so we have full control over the uh, red remote inside the JHS pedals now. Okay, so the next thing we want to talk about is we've added the ability to use an expression pedal as a volume pedal. So inside the Unity 6, um, we have, so right now I have an expression pedal hooked up and you can see that it is controlling expression messages. 
and that would be found in the programming underneath um, expression two. So you could assign any of eight messages here and that'll control a min max, you know, a range of expression across eight different messages. Um, so that controls the expression at the moment. But if we wanted to make this a volume pedal, the first thing we'd have to do is go, go into our global settings and make sure that this Uniport 2 is assigned to an expression pedal, which that is. And then when you go into programming here, you now have these options as expression one to volume or expression two to volume. By simply clicking the checkbox, what it has done is uh, disabled any expression programming. So you'll see that that has been disabled and grayed out. But when you go to the home screen, now it says volume. So it's a visual notifier that lets you know that your expression pedal is now a volume pedal for this bank. So nothing new here, it still rolls the slider up and down, but instead of sending MIDI expression notes, CC messages, PC messages, things like that, it's literally controlling your analog signal, which is placed after all of your loops. So this would be like having a volume pedal placed after your overdrives per se. Um, so what's cool about this is that this is saved on a per preset basis. So if we go back into programming, you'll see that um, expression two is checked and then that's grayed out. You can now use the BPM knob to scroll around and you'll notice that these are active until you get to bank one. And that would be the same thing here. It is checked and then it's unchecked as you roll back. So this is all saved on a per bank basis, which means your expression pedal can do expression messages on one bank and then it can be a volume pedal on another bank. So which, that is a super handy feature that we have added in version 2.0. Okay, so the next thing we wanna talk about in version 2.0 is our copy, paste, and swap feature. This is something that many of you have asked for and we have added that now in version 2.0. So copy and paste, so copy and paste. Let's, let's go over here, let's switch banks to bank four. You can see that Bank four is completely empty. Now the loops are still on because we talked about that earlier, but everything else is empty. The name, all the messages. So I want to show you bank four is empty. Let's go into uh, our, let's go back to bank one. And then let's show you, let's copy and paste a whole bank. So we can copy whole banks and we can also do that with individual presets. For this example, we go into the programming menu and now we are within a whole bank. You'll notice there's a little hamburger menu here. So you can either press on the screen or use the BPM knob to click on that and you get your little copy paste swap menu that drops down. So in order to paste or swap banks, you obviously have to copy it first. So you use the BPM knob to highlight it, click that, it asks to confirm. And then once it's copied the bank, what we'll do is we'll navigate to the new bank we wanna to go to. So in this instance, bank four, click the BPM knob and then we will hit paste bank. So again, it asks you to confirm and then it's gonna go ahead and paste the bank. And from here, we'll go out and we'll move, we'll navigate to bank four and show you uh, exactly what we just did. We basically copied one bank into another. So we're in bank one, we go to bank four and now you can see bank four has everything we had on bank one, but notice in the corner, we are now on bank four and then all of our messages still work. We can control the red remote um, we can control uh, our verse one, verse two. We even jump to the loop, like all of that is programmed in there. And then this jumps back to the previous bank, so it takes us right back to bank four. Okay, so now let's quickly show you how we can copy and paste an individual preset instead of the whole bank. So here you can see that we have this JHS red remote feature that we wanna copy, and we wanna put that in bank three. And so you can see bank three is empty. Let's go ahead and go into our programming. We'll navigate to uh, bank four where we have that saved underneath switch four. We go ahead and hit copy preset. We confirm that. And then once that's done, we can jump back, we jump back into uh, programming mode. We go to bank three and switch one hit our drop down menu and we're gonna paste the preset. And then you will notice that that preset is automatically pasted. So if we go to, let's refresh bank three here. And now you can see that that JHS preset is copied right into bank three and we're now controlling our kilt. 
And then last but not least, let's go ahead and clear a whole preset um, and into programming. Let's go to the whole bank. Sorry, I said preset. We're going to clear the whole bank. Let's go to bank four. We're going to hit the drop down menu and we're just going to hit clear bank. And then that'll completely clear out the whole bank four. And then you can do the same thing on a preset. So let's just go back home and show you how we did that. Back to bank four. You'll see the bank four is now completely empty. So that is the copy and paste. And uh, we didn't show you swapping, but it's the same thing. You copy a bank and then you select where you want to go and hit swap and it just literally swaps the two presets in spot. So this is really handy and useful for when you want to, um, let's say you've got a lot of presets or banks saved onto your Unity 6 and you want to rearrange them for your Sunday set list. This makes it very useful to rearrange them on the fly right here on the pedal without even having to go into the editor. Okay, and so last but not least, we want to talk about our brand new device editor. So let's show you how we can connect that to the Unity 6 and then let's show you how that works. So for just for now, I'm gonna to refresh to our bank one. And then that way we have some stuff programmed on here. I'm gonna grab my phone and get my phone connected here. And we will show you what that looks like. So I'm using an iPhone today. This works with an iPad. This works with your desktop, your PC. Uh, Mac, Android, any device that has the ability to have Wi-Fi on it and has access to a browser. So here you can see this is our Wi-Fi menu. We're just gonna click here and we're gonna wait for the Unity 6 to show up. Um, the Unity 6 will connect. I've already connected to my Unity 6 so I don't have to put in my password. Um, but for you, for the first time connecting, it's gonna have a password pop up. And for now, the default password is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Really generic, I know, but at least that gets you into and has a little bit of protection on the Unity 6. So now you can see that we have connected. The screen has updated on the Unity 6 and it's letting you know that uh, the device editor is connected, disconnect from Wi-Fi to use the pedal. So the pedal, you can't touch the screen, you can't use the switches. Um, so it's a clear indicator to letting you know that you are connected to your device editor. Now on that note, when you connect from any computer nowadays, the, you, it automatically has you set to auto join whenever you're in range and it's powered up. And we suggest that you don't have that setting turned on because you don't want your device to be disconnected and not available to use. Would say when your phone is maybe in the green room and then your pedal board is on the stage and then you've got your pedal locked up. So all we do is we go in here to the info and it has this auto join button. Normally it's on, we would just turn that off. And then when you go back to Wi-Fi, you may have seen this earlier, but the Unity 6 said uh, no internet available or not connected to the internet. And that is perfectly fine and designed that way because we are not connected to the web. We are connected locally to the pedal. So don't worry if you see that pop up. Okay, so from here, there you go. No internet connection. Now let me pull up a browser and I'll jump back. Hang on one second. So if we go here, jetpedals.local backslash beta. This loads our device editor. So here is the first look at our device editor. You will notice that it pretty much looks exactly like the pedal. So you'll be very familiar if you're, or if, if you're familiar with programming the, on the pedal, then you're gonna be very familiar with using the device editor. So you can see that we have a few icons on the top, our home screen, global settings, and then programming. But global settings is just like on the pedal here. You have max number of banks, your expression ports, you can name your loops, you can turn loops on and off. You've got all of your information here in your MIDI. You can name your MIDI channels updating your firmware. This is where you select your file and update. And then when you go back to programming, you'll see it, like I was saying earlier, it's monochrome. This lets you know there's a temporary disconnect between the pedal. Um, so if you ever see that in that monochrome, you just wanna wait until the pedal is full color again. And then you, any messages you make on here will be automatically saved. So speaking of which, just like our pedal, there is no save button on here. So anytime you make a change within the device editor, it is automatically updated and saved in the pedal. And then when you update things uh, in the editor, you will also see that reflect live on the pedal 
Uh, but since it's locked out, really the only thing you're gonna see update is the scribble strips. So for instance, on scribble strip three, um, let's, let's first of all touch three. You'll see that ring highlights and now we're working with any messages saved to switch three. And then we can change the color of that scribble strip. Let's just change it to red. And you can see that updates immediately. We'll go ahead and switch that back to blue and then we will show you some of the programming on here. So switch one is now you can see that we have messages on here. So this is just like the pedal on the release. It's going to turn off loop one or two. You can suggest you can select any list of the 32 messages that are on the pedal. So number seven, you can see that it updates We're turning on loop four and I've named my loop. So this is the fuzz loop. This would be the Juliana loop six. You kind of get the idea. So once we once we make that change on here, that reflects immediately on the pedal. So this is exactly how you'd program it. If you wanted to change the name of the scribble strip, you can do that here. Just types up, you retype the name, and then you'll see that that is reflected immediately as well. So let's just change that to verse one. Hit done. You'll see the scribble strip updates automatically. Um, if you want to update any of, the, any of the other switches or anything stored underneath the BPM knob, you simply click the switch and then you'll see the messages update that are on there. Um, updating the home screen information, you can click on the home screen to change the loop order. So here you can change the loop order uh, for this particular bank. And then uh, you can select your bank list from that drop down menu there. You can change your BPM, the bank name. This is expression to volume. These are all my tap divisions, so I've got different tap divisions on this device. And then um, from, from here we have bank send. So this is where you can you have 16 messages to choose from when the bank loads. So whenever the bank loads, it'll send any of these, all of these messages you have programmed here. And then expression one, you have eight messages for your expression, for each expression pedal. And then you'll notice expression two is grayed out and you can't tap it. That is because we have the expression two to volume turned on. So when we turn that off, now we have the ability to update expression pedal two. So that in a nutshell is pretty much everything you need to know about the device editor, <clears throat> about the device editor. And that reflects uh, pretty much programming just like you would on the pedal. So it should be very easy to use, it's very responsive. You can uh, rotate and then you can have a bigger screen. You know, it, it's very responsive editor. And then I guess the last feature I wanted to show you, it's not uh, obvi that obvious, but you can press the bank up and down buttons, and then that will switch to your banks. So you'll notice we have empty scribbles, and then here it says bank number two. So you can, you can go up and down through your banks, and when you reach the bottom, it'll bank all the way up to 127. So you can see this is my loops bank. Okay, so there you have it. That's the first look at our brand new device editor. We hope you guys uh, are thrilled about this as we are. Um, it's really cool the fact that you can do this on your mobile phone. Um, you don't have to have anything connected. If you haven't noticed, there is no USB cables connected to here. You do, you do not have to disconnect your pedal from your pedal board and try and get a USB cable connected to your computer. Uh, you just program right here on your device. Everything saves and then uh, you're good to go. So I guess one last thing, I will disconnect from our Wi-Fi and you'll notice that the screen updates. So you just simply go back to your Wi-Fi settings, click on your local network here, and then as soon as that connection happens, you will see the, the pedal update and then disconnect from Wi-Fi. Okay, so that is everything that we've added to the Unity 6 and version 2.0. I hope you guys enjoy. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments. We'll see you later.